go. Perfect. Oh, let's see. We still have people that can't get on. Um, let's see. What was it? Seven six seven one nine two. Hmm. Sorry, I just got another message that somebody else was trying to get in and they cannot. I'm gonna forward this email one more time. Okay, sorry guys, I'm trying to do all of the things at the same time. <laughs> okay, first off, who has participated in any of these contests before? Millie, what once you've done horse public speaking last year, right? Okay, cool. Who else has participated? Elin, you did demonstration last year. I think Kelly's in. Okay, no. Okay. Um, awesome. This is going to be some really good information. So let me go ahead and get started by sharing my screen. Um, if I can find it. I don't know if they are. I don't know if they are. Yes. Control. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. Okay. Public speaking and demonstrations. All right. So just to kind of give you guys a little bit more information. Um, traditionally in Davis County 4-H, the horse public speaking and horse demonstration contests have been held within the horse, Western Horse Show program. Um, with Lauren coming in as a new staff member, her and I decided to pull the horse contests back into county contests and combine them with our other public speaking and demonstration and presentation contests. Um, so our purpose for tonight is to kind of go over what those contests look like, how they are different from each other, what um, preparation can be done to put them together. And then we've got a few example videos, um, but also I just want to offer for any of you who are putting these presentations or speeches together for the first time, if you need extra help or want one-on-one -on -one help with either I or Lauren, we are happy to do that. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna have to minimize my thing here to keep this one. Okay, so if you guys have questions, I've got Zoom and minimize so I can't see you. So if you have a question, please unmute and go ahead and start talking and interrupt me, okay? Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna start with 4-H prepared speech and horse public speaking. There is a difference. First off, we're gonna talk about prepared speech. Um, a prepared speech is anywhere from six to eight minutes on a topic that you get to choose outside of the horse industry. We'll put it that way. Um, so this could be anything that is family consumer, consumer science related, um, STEM related, uh, anything, anything you can think of. There is no limit to a topic. Um, in a speech, you are not allowed to use any visual aids, wear costumes, use posters or PowerPoint presentation. The only thing you can have with you are your notes. And we will have at the county contest, we will have a podium for you. We'll be in a smaller room, so you won't have to have like a microphone or anything like that. Um, but you'll have a podium or a table. You can use your notes. Um, it's advised not to just read your notes but you're going to give them a speech that you have prepared, a rehearsed speech, speech basically, okay? Horse public speaking is very much the same in that you're going to prepare and rehearse your speech and present it, but the difference is that it has to be related to the horse industry in some way or the equine industry. So this could be anything on, you can talk about a training technique, you can talk about um, farrier skills, you can talk about creating and making saddles or fitting a saddle to a horse or equine dentistry or equine husbandry or the different breeds of a horse, the different 
um, anything you can think of that is related to the equine industry in that, um, and when I say related to the equine industry, I'm talking specifically about a career option within the equine industry, nutrition, um, what the different types of hay, the different types of grain, you know, anything you can think of that is directly related. Could you do colic? Yep. Yep. You could give a speech about colic um, or different types of like emergencies with horses. Yep. Veterinary related. Yep. That would absolutely work. Okay. Um, again, the rules are the same. No visual aids, no props, no costumes, no videos. You can have notes and that is it. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Could it yeah. be like horse therapy or like yep. anything like that? Okay. Yep. Thank yeah. You. Hippotherapy is a really great topic. Um, I think if I remember right, Millie, you and Kennedy Cowley were the only two that did horse public speaking last year. And I want to say that Kennedy's topic related to um, equine therapy, I think with miniature horses, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another difference with the horse public speaking is that depending on your age group, whether you're a junior, an intermediate, or a senior, your time limit will vary based on your age group. Okay. And we'll get to looking at the rules um, on the website in a little bit. Okay, any more questions about horse public speaking? Okay. Um, okay, so putting together your speech. Select your topic or subject that you wanna talk about. I suggest that it be something that you're already familiar with. So you feel a little bit more comfortable with the subject that you're talking about. Um, for a 4-H prepared speech, again, they're both very similar other than uh, and I see my typo right there. Um, <clears throat> the horse public speaking has to be specific to the horse industry, whereas your 4-H prepared speech does not. It could be any topic that you can think of, um, something that has economic or practical importance to your community, your family, and again, something that you're already interested in and that's familiar to you that would be easy for you to, to talk about. Putting together an outline um, when you're putting your speech together, will help you kind of get your ideas organized and kind of help you go through it as you're giving your speech during the contest to the judges. Um, so listing out like your main topic idea and then some kind of a few key points that you want to cover during your speech and then organizing them in such a way that it'll be helpful to you to remember them, to go through them. And then your conclusion at the end, um, just kind of to wrap up and summarize what you're talking about. Okay. When you are putting your speech together, um, a catchy introduction. You guys have probably heard this a lot before. Typically with a 4-H contest, whether you're doing your speech or your demonstration, you're gonna introduce yourself. Um, introduce yourself and have some kind of introduction. It could be a question, it could be a quote, it could be um, a statement that kind of starts you into it. And then you go into, my name is such and such. I've been in 4-H for this long. I'm part of this program or part of this uh, club. And I'm here to talk to you today about this subject. Um, transitions, helping you move from one point to the next. Um, in addition to, in other words, this means when, then, those types of statements just kind of help. So it's not just a end of a thought, start a new thought, but find those transitions in between your key points. Um, Lauren put together some examples. I think this one for your prepared speech. Okay, it's a 10 minute video, so I'm not gonna watch the whole thing, but did you guys kind of get an example of like a catchy pull-in 
and then he introduced himself and then he's going to go through and kind of list these are the key points that I'm going to talk about before he gets into the actual body of his speech. Do you guys have any questions about that? I don't know about anybody else, but I couldn't really hear it that well. Okay, I am sorry. Let me make sure my volume is up a little louder. Yeah, and I couldn't hear okay. either. Okay, let me try that again. Tell I me. I couldn't hear it at all. At all? All right, let's try that again. Dungeons and Dragons, or D and D, is a role playing game where a group of people get together and create their own mythical characters, then play with as them on a magical quest. A very common form that these quests take is a long, treacherous journey to defeat one big evildoer and claim a vast treasure. Luckily for me, these imaginary adventures aren't the only time I've gotten to have great fun and learn life lessons along the way. My name is Seth Ivey, and I'm excited to share with you the impact where it just had on my life and the three major takeaways that have helped me to succeed both in D&D &D and my actual life. These three takeaways Okay, did you guys hear it that time? Yeah, I heard it. Okay, cool. Okay, so you guys kind of get the main idea, right? Like a catchy introduction, then he introduces himself, and then he kind of goes into the key points that he's going to cover before he gets the body of his speech. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Okay, perfect um the body of your speech so again organizing the key points that you want to cover good transitions between your key points um and this is where you add in information that supports what you're trying to say right um keeping it all organized yeah i don't even know how to kind of describe it and maybe those of you who are on here who have done a speech before can kind of add into this some um, either examples or tips on how to put your speech together. But I would just like to say, like, just put it together in such a way that it, you can help flow through it um, so that you keep it organized. You don't lose your place. That's what I'm trying to say. Make sense? Okay. The body of the speech. Um, this is kind of a long video, so I'm not going to go through it, the whole entire thing, unless you guys want to see it and need the extra help. But again, I'll share this out too, so you guys can watch it. And then your conclusion. So after you go through your main talking points, you're going to kind of summarize what you said and, and end your body, end your speech with a reiteration and then open up or questions with your judges. Make sense? Okay. So we will listen to this. Overall, 4-H has helped my life in inconceivably massive ways and have helped me become the person I've wanted to be. Whether it's um, allowing me to overcome unbearable obstacles teaching me how to realize what I'm capable of or allowing me to help other people succeed, 4-H's influence is truly massive on my life. And whether you've never heard of 4-H before, I would ur urge you to, dive, to give it a try. If you have been just dabbling in 4-H, I'd urge you to get involved more and dive right into the program. And if 4-H has been as much a part of your life as it has been mine, I urge you a moment of, pre of appreciation for what it has given you. It will make your life change for the better. Thank you. Okay. I also would like to point out that I can't remember this young man's name, but he put this speech together on the spot for Lauren for this presentation. So I think he did a pretty good job for just making something up on the go. Um, but does that make sense? Does that, um, are there any questions or comments about putting together the conclusion of your speech? Okay. Um, then I want to take a minute real quick while, before we move on from public speaking to talk about attire, what you should wear during your speech. So for those of you who are 
um, planning on participating in a horse public speaking contest. Generally, your clothing or your attire should be Western attire, um, fairly similar to what you would wear during your Western horse shows. Um, again, costumes aren't allowed in this contest like they are in the demonstration contest, um, but try to wear something like if you guys noticed, he was playing with the strings on his hoodie. So wear something that doesn't have danglies that you're gonna wanna play with when you're nervous. Um, Western attire is appropriate for the 4-H speech. Um, more dress clothing is appropriate for this contest. You generally don't wanna show up wearing jeans and a t-shirt or shorts and flip-flops. Um, you wanna be dressed more um, <clears throat> business casual, not necessarily girls like wearing a dress, boys wearing a suit type of a thing. Um, but just dress up a little bit nicer, like if you were to go out to um, like a fancy restaurant or, you know, a, um, a play for dinner or something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, in these contests, you are not required to wear a 4-H patch. For those of you who are doing horse shows, we're very used to wearing our 4-H patch. Horse shows and the livestock show are the only time you're ever going to see kids wearing patches. So if you don't have a patch on, you're totally fine. But you do want to be in Western attire for a horse contest. Okay. All right. Um, before we dive into presentation and demonstration, are there any more questions or comments about speeches? Okay. All right, let's get into this. All right, so FCS presentation. FCS or Family Consumer Science. Um, it's a presentation or demonstration or illustrated talk that is related to family and consumer science subject matter, which can be pretty much anything, pretty much anything. Um, the contestant is responsible for bringing your own equipment, supplies, and visual aids. So in this contest, you can use um, physical objects or visual aids. You can use a PowerPoint presentation. You can use poster boards. Um, anything you want to do, you just have to supply it. So if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, make sure you bring a device that has your PowerPoint on it. I suggest not on a phone. So we tend to have the most trouble trying to get um, documents or PowerPoint presentations from the phone to whatever computer that we're going to be using. So if you can put it on a jump drive, or um, can't even think, or bring a laptop so we can connect into the program, that would be the best, okay? Um, you can use notes, like if you wanna make note cards, um, but again, just reading off of your note cards is not advised. So try to rehearse it as much as you can. A 4-H demonstration is different than FCS presentations. So FCS presentations are specific to the family and consumer sciences. A 4-H demonstration is outside of that area. So we have anything agriculture related, just not horse, um, plants, STEM, mental health, citizenship and civic education, personal safety, et cetera. So family and consumer sciences is gonna be more along the lines of um, sewing projects, sewing construction, cooking, um, childhood development, that type of a thing. Whereas for each demonstration is going to be anything else that you can possibly think of. This contest, you can participate as an individual or as a team of two. It is best if those two are within the same age group, junior, intermediate, or senior. Um, again, bring your own equipment and supplies, visual aids, PowerPoints, what be it. And you can use notes, but try not to just read off of them. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, a horse demonstration. Um, a horse demonstration is a presentation or illustrated talk that is directly related to the equine industry. The, the times for these contests will vary based on your age group. And this one also can be an individual or team contest, a team of two, ideally within the same age group. You can use a PowerPoint, you can dress in costumes, you can use props, 
but you cannot bring a live animal in any of these contests. You cannot use live animals. Bummer, I know. Um, so some examples, if you are doing a demonstration that would involve a live animal, you can use videos in your PowerPoint presentation. You can use um, large, like a stuffed animal or a toy animal to demonstrate what you need to do, but you cannot use actual live animals, okay? Comments, questions, thoughts? Awesome. Okay, so getting it, putting your demonstration together is similar to what you're gonna be going over in like a public speak, speaking contest. Um, first, you need to find out or decide what your subject matter is gonna be, or your topic is gonna be, list out your main points that you're gonna cover um, and the list of steps that you're going to cover. So if you are demonstrating, for example, how to build a bottle rocket, um, come up with the title for your demonstration, catchy introduction, introduce yourself and what you're gonna go over. And then you're gonna wanna quickly cover the steps that you're going to cover and then go through the steps and demonstrate how to do it. So you're gonna have all the materials that you need to build a bottle rocket. You're going to go through and build the bottle rocket and then have an example of one that's already finished. Um, if for like a horse demonstration, if you were to do say a demonstration on how to dress for a 4-H horse show, you're going to have, you can have pictures in a PowerPoint presentation or you can actually bring actual clothing items to put together different examples. Um, and you're gonna state like, I'm going to do my demonstration on this. This is who I am. And this is how long I've been in 4-H. These are the key points I'm going to cover. Go through all of the steps and then have your finished product. Does that make sense? Um, do we need to do like every single one of these demonstrations or is it just like a few? Okay, so you can participate in as many of these contests or only one. That totally depends on you and the time that you have. So if you are a member of the 4-H horse program here in Davis County, our horse demonstration contest and the horse public speaking contest do count towards your year-end awards. However, only one of those two contests can be used for those points. So before the contest, if you do decide to participate in both horse public speaking and horse demonstration, awesome. You have to declare before the contest which of those you will use towards your year-end awards. And just let me know. That's all you have to do is let me know which one you want to do. All of these contests, you are able to take up to the state classics contests. And I'll get to that towards the end of this presentation. Okay, but does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Peyton. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? Does anybody want to share any examples of subjects or topics that you have gone over in a demonstration or a presentation? I have one question. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of confused. Are we allowed to use PowerPoint or no? Because I feel like you keep on going back and forth with that. Okay. Not so for public speaking or prepared speech contests, no. For FCS presentation, 4-H demonstration, or horse demonstration, yes, you can use PowerPoint. Do you have to do both public speaking and demonstrations to be eligible for your end awards? You, or you just do one? Not. You do not. You, no, do not. you can okay. only you only have to do one. You don't have to do any if you don't want to, but at least one towards your end awards. If you want to do both contests, horse public speaking and horse demonstration, only one of those two will count towards your end awards. Did that clear things up or make things more confusing? That answered it. Okay, perfect. Okay, any more questions or does anybody wanna share some ideas that they've used for these contests? Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, so when you're putting together, most of the time with technology being the way that it is, um, PowerPoints are used the most. Posters still can be used. Um, if you're going to use posters instead of a PowerPoint presentation, just make sure that whatever pictures you put on your poster or whatever wording you put on your poster is large enough 
that your judges and the people watching in the back of the room are going to be able to see it. So don't make, you know, your little 10 point font words up on your poster. No one will be able to read it. All right. So I would say, you know, like put your posters up and if you can read it from like 10 feet away, then you're good to go. So you're going to have the title of your demonstration um, give key points that you're going to cover and then summarize your key points. And then if you, like I said, if you are doing a demonstration that involves a live animal by chance or something that you cannot bring into the classroom, you can include videos of it or pictures of it in your PowerPoint presentation or on your posters. Does that make sense? Okay, and I've got some videos at the end that we can watch too. There's not a super ton of them, but okay. Here we go. Okay, so this is, okay. Did my screen, hold on, I let feel me pause like this. Go. Did my screen go to YouTube? Are you guys seeing YouTube? Yeah. Perfect, okay. Yeah. So this is, a, this is an example of a demonstration. Um, she's using posters, not a PowerPoint presentation. Um, this is about four and a half minutes, so hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of what we're looking for. Like I do, and need a place to hold your arrows, this is a great do-it-yourself project. With a few simple materials that you can buy at your local hardware store, this quiver and bow stand is inexpensive and easy to make. It is durable, not too heavy, and you can even decorate it with your own style. I have enjoyed using mine in my backyard while practicing my 4-H archery skills. As you can see, this quiver and bow stand is mostly created out of PVC pipes and pieces. Here are the ones that you'll need to buy at the store. A 3-inch inside fitting flange, two slip-on caps, and two elbows a small tee fitting and a big tee fitting, an adapter and a bushing, a two foot three inch PVC pipe and a five foot one inch PVC pipe. You will, while you're at the store, you will also need to get a can of spray foam, a roll of duct tape, that is your choice of color, and a two by eight by eight board. The thicker board helps stabilize the stand. To put it together, you will need these tools. A screw gun, a circular saw, a measuring tape, and four screws. To make this quiver and bow stand, you will first need to cut your five foot one inch PVC pipe to these lengths. Two six inch pieces, two five inch pieces, and one three inch piece. You will also need to cut your board at 20 inches long. Step two, now you are ready to assemble. Let me show you how to build it from top to bottom. First, take your slip-on caps and put them on your five inch pieces. Then take your elbows and put them on the other end. Then put your six inch pieces in the other side of the elbows. Then put those into the sides of the small T fitting. Then at the bottom, put your three inch piece on, push on your adapter, and screw on your bushing. And that will go in to your big T fitting, which will go on top of your two foot three inch PVC pipe. Step three, wrap your choice of duct tape around the pipes in between the cap and elbow. This will protect your bow when it is resting on the stand. Step four, screw the flange all the way to one side of the board for weight balance. Step five, spray the foam into the circle of the flange. 
once it is dry, it'll keep your arrow tips nice and sharp. Step six, push your clover stand onto the flange very tightly. The directions on the spray foam say it'll take up to eight hours to dry. Once it is, you can drop your arrows in, put your bow on the stand, and it is ready to use. I got this idea because we needed a quiver for our arrows at home, and it was also a project that I got to build with my dad. We looked at images by Googling do-it-yourself quiver and bow stands. We took a picture of it, took it to the store with us, found the pieces that we needed, and figured out the measurements as we built it. I'm happy for you to take this idea and make it your own. I hope you use it as much as I do. Hey, any questions, you guys? Anything you liked or maybe would have done different than she did in her demonstration? I really liked how she said, like, how long it took to dry, like, at the beginning, because then they, like, know what to expect when it's done. Absolutely. That's a very good point. I liked how she was just very confident, I guess, and like didn't stutter or anything. She had, she had a good like speaking volume and pace and everything like that. I would agree with that. Yeah, she was really easy to listen to, wasn't she? But still kept it interesting enough. Um, another thing that she did that I have forgotten to mention is at the end of her demonstration, she cited her resources. This is a really big key component. So as you guys are putting together your speech or your, or your demonstrations, presentations, you need to include your resources. So what websites did you use to find information, books, articles, images, anything like that, wherever you're pulling information from, you need to cite that or show it in your demonstration or your presentation, okay? Okay. Um, Let's see, I have another video, but it's a little bit longer, so I'm not gonna go through that, and it's a little bit older. Um, but again, I will share this present this PowerPoint with everybody so you guys can see it. Um, okay, now we're gonna go to the State 4-H website, and we're gonna look at, okay, so this is the website for the state contest called the 4-H Classics. Um, this contest is being held in Spanish Fork this June, June 27th through the 29th. Okay, juniors, intermediates, and seniors are invited to participate at this contest. And these contests that we're working, we're talking about tonight are included at the state classics. All right. Um, so these are all of the contests that are going to be happening. So if you guys are participating in our county contests, um, whether that's the 4-H prepared speech or 4-H demonstrations, horse demonstrations, horse public speaking um, are the ones that we're talking about tonight. Sorry, my kids are going to get noisy. Um, my apologies. You guys could take these contests after county contests up to the state contest. And awesome thing about this website is that it gives you the rules that you need to follow for each of those contests and also the judges scoring sheet or what we call the judges rubric. So I'm going to go ahead and open the 4-H demonstrations contest. Okay. And here are your rules. So it gives you the categories of what you can talk about. It talks about how you can enter this contest as an individual or members of two. And then it gives you some key points that you need to um, follow. So your presentation should not exceed 20 minutes in length. Include 10 to 15 minutes for your presentation, five minutes at the end for setup and takedown. You also will have time for judges questions after you finish, right? So make sure that you use your resources. Make sure when you're deciding which contest to participate in that you know um, the rules for that contest. Let's go back to horse public speaking because like I said, there are different time limits for the different age groups in the horse contest. So 
speeches should not be, again, this is horse public speaking, speeches should not be seven to 10 minutes in length for seniors, six to eight minutes for intermediates, and a minimum of five minutes for juniors, okay? So if you go down just a little bit further, it gives you some key points about the rules. And then here is the judge's score sheet or the judge's rubric. This is how the judge is going to be judging you. So your introduction, 10 points. The organization of your speech, 15 points. Content and accuracy, 20 points. Did you know what you were talking about? Did you sound like you knew what you were talking about? Um, your stage presence is 15 points. Were you appropriately dressed? Did you speak in a friendly manner? Were you easy to listen to? Um, delivery and speech, general 10 points, conclusion 10 points. And then here, you'll see that for a junior, minimum five minutes in length, intermediate six to eight minutes in length, seniors 10, seven to 10 minutes in length. And it's a minus three point deduction for every minute you go over or come under your time limit. So that's really important, okay? We want you guys to be as successful in these contests as possible. So making sure that you know the rules is the best and the first place to start. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So again, I will share this PowerPoint presentation that Lauren and I put together. Um, I'm recording this and I will get this sent up to Lauren so she can get it on YouTube and out as quickly as possible. Um, but the last thing that I want to say before I finish is if you guys want one on one help with your presentations, you can reach out to one of us. So if you're going to be participating in any horse or livestock related contests, contact me, Jenna Aldrich. If you want to participate in FCS, STEM, or any of the classics contests, reach out to Lauren. If you're interested in any of the shooting sports contests, um, which is not part of the classics that happens in June, um, their shooting sports are separate. Tarl Hull is one of our coordinators and he is over all the shooting sports contests. Okay, so again, I will send this all out to you so that you guys have this information when you're ready for it. Okay, are there any questions or comments or if you guys wanna share ideas, this is the time to do it. I have a few questions. Go for it. Um, my first one is, do you have to go to the classics in June to qualify for state? Or can you go to country and then state? Okay, so the county contest or is county. happening. Yep. So yes, you have to participate in a county contest in order to qualify or to move up to the state contest. So our county contest, the registration is open now in the Z-Suite program, fortagezsuite.org. And it's scheduled for April 21st and 22nd, I do believe, okay? Um, the state contests are June 27th through the 29th. And yeah, so you have to go through here your county contest in order to make it up to state. For your seniors, senior age group 4-H members from the state contests can qualify to go to national contests, which is held in January in Denver at the National Roundup, which is a really big deal. So these contests, your speeches, um, your demonstrations um, for seniors can take you all the way to the national level. What other and questions also, did you have? So, sorry, I have a couple more. Um, do you have to have like notes and then you improvise while you're up there? like? Or do you have more of a planned out and written speech for demonstration? For demonstration, it's best if you can work off of just a few key points and then kind of talk off of there. Um, if you are just reading off of a piece of paper or reading off of note cards, the whole entire thing, you're not going to score as high as you would if you just had a few key points written down and then you were able to talk off of those points. Okay, any other questions or comments or sharing? Sorry, I have one last one. No worries. Um, uh, when it said for the public speaking, um, it said like the, con the contestant 
So to repeat the question when the judges are asking the question um, and then answer it after they repeat it, is this required or just wanted? Okay, so during the judges questions, the judges are usually gonna ask you, we'll have probably two judges at our county contest, state contest, there's generally three judges. And most times you'll get at least one question from each of those judges. In repeating the judge's question back to them before answering it in some way will help you to score higher points in that it shows the judge that you listened, you knew what they were asking, and you thought about it before just answering and blurting out whatever comes to your mind first. Does that make sense? So I would recommend it. I wouldn't say that it's a requirement, but I would recommend in some way repeating the question back to the judge when they ask it and then giving your answers. So for example, um, let's see, for example, if Elon was giving a demonstration about how to tie a horse hay bag out of bailing twine. And if I was one of the judges and she finished, I would say, Elin, where did you learn how to tie a hay net for your horse? She would say, that is a very good question. I learned how to tie a hay bag out of bailing twine when spending a summer with my grandparents up at their cabin and helping taking care of their horses two years ago. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions about any of these contests that we've covered tonight? Awesome. All right. Does anybody want to share ideas of topics that they're planning to use or have seen used? This is kind of like a question, but like you do it like on like your seating when riding and like take a video for the um, horse demonstration. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, so I would suggest kind of like the video that we watched with the demonstration, how she went over something very, very simple, right? She didn't have a whole lot of subject matter. She was just building one thing. So you got to remember when you're putting these speeches and these presentations together, you don't have a lot of time. So you don't want to put a ton of information in, right? Um, so if I were to be putting together a demonstration about um, your seat, you could use pictures or videos of yourself sitting in the saddle. And you can go over like the different of proper position in a Western saddle versus improper position in a Western saddle and why that could be bad. And you can talk about um, and have pictures of this person is leading too far forward and this person is leading too far back and that type of thing. And this is the ideal position and why and keep it that simple. Um, you could even go a different direction and say, um, like, this is the proper position when sitting in a hunt seat saddle. This is the proper position for sitting in a Western saddle. This is the proper position for sitting in a dressage saddle. You know, if you want to go that direction, you can. My suggestion is keep it simple. Try not to add in and shove in a whole lot of information. Just keep it to like one key point and a few ideas off of that. Does that make sense? And then if you, and then practice it, obviously you wanna practice it and watch your time limits, right? Okay, any other questions or ideas? Awesome, okay, I will share a few. Um, I've only ever seen horse demonstrations, so I, sorry, I apologize for those of you who are not planning on doing a horse demonstration. Um, I shared the bottle rocket idea. That was a fun demonstration that I saw a few years ago. Um, he didn't actually like shoot off the bottle rocket, probably wouldn't wanna do that in a classroom, but he had, just like the video that we watched, he had poster boards with the different steps and all the pieces that he needed. He put it all together and had an example of a finished product at the end. Um, another fun demonstration I remember seeing was um, how to bake your own horse treats. 
And so she had um, all the items that she needed, the baking trays, measuring cups, ingredients, everything was already like sorted out. And she had pictures of her horses. She showed the um, recipe on a poster and she had the steps all the way through. So she had all of her ingredients out and then how to mix it all together. And then she had the finished product out. And that was a really fun demonstration. And she was wearing, I think she was in Western attire and she had a cute little apron on top and um, she looked really cute. Um, let's see, from contest last year. Oh, what was another idea that I was gonna share? Um, okay, so for the national contest last year, um, since it was virtual, there was a senior team from out of state who did their horse demonstration on, um, oh, what was the title now? I can't remember. It has something to do with cowboys out on the range and on like a wagon team or a cattle drive. That's what it was, a cattle drive and what the cowboys would have in their packs. And so they had like a whole bunch of items out, like a canteen, um, different strings of leather, hobbles, all the items that they would typically carry with them on a cattle drive. And then they demonstrated how to roll the packs and tie them onto the back of the saddle. So it was really cool. So they had, they used a PowerPoint presentation. They each took turns going over the different items. And then they had all the items there and together they demonstrated how to roll the pack and tie it onto the back of the saddle. Right. So different things like that. Um, for, so the bottle rocket would probably fit under STEM for 4 H demonstration and FCS presentation topic idea. You could go over um, how to sew a pillowcase and have like the different uh, fabric pieces already cut to the lengths that you need. Um, we'll talk about the different stitches that you would use and the process that you would go through and then have your finished product of this is the pillowcase that I would have created using these steps listed. And again, always cite your resources. That's the biggest thing to remember is to cite your resources as well. Okay, I probably rambled your guys' ears off enough. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Okay, all right. Well, if we're good, I'll go ahead and say goodbye. Let me end this recording.